Hi there and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So this week we are going to continue our discussion of um, the traditional frame by frame process. Um, talking about now taking this rough work into doing cleans. So when we are talking about doing clean work, um, you know, we can talk about doing lines that have texture as well as lines that are totally solid. Uh, but generally what we want to do is we want to keep that rough layer there as reference. So I'll just turn off the onion skin and keep my rough layer there as reference. And then I can add a new layer on top of this that I'll call clean character. So we can check out how this is going on. So when you're looking at drawing digitally in Harmony, there are two types of lines that you may want to draw with. There is your pencil line. Let me do this here in black so that we can check it out. So there's the pencil line and there's a brush line. And I'm just taking off the texture. I had been playing around with texture last time. So let me take off the texture so that you guys can see what we're going on about here. Okay, so the line on the top here was the one that I drew with the pencil tool. And the line on the bottom is the line that I drew with the brush tool. So you'll notice that both um, lines here do have pressure sensitivity from the tablet as I'm drawing. Um, in the pencil tool and in the brush tool, you have the ability to turn off the pressure sensitivity or to lessen it because when you have those tools selected in your tool properties, you have control over the minimum size and the maximum size. So the minimum size is the size when you press lightly with your tablet and the maximum size is the size when you press hard with your tablet. So when we look at the difference between a pencil and a brush though, what the real difference is is that the pencil line is defined by the center. See there's a line, a, a sort of an orange line there that runs through the center of this line. So that's the, the line or the path that defines where this pencil line exists. On the contrary, on the brush line we have the contour around the outer edge of the line. Another way to look at this is if I look at it with my contour editor tool, this is the tool that allows me to actually adjust the paths on those lines. So if I look at the lines now, you can see the contour points that actually define the lines. So you see the contour points on the pencil line are in the center, and the contour lines on the uh, contour points on the brush line are on the outside. So what does this mean for you? When doing cleanup work, it's sometimes very important to make small, minute adjustments because you might not draw the line perfectly the first time around. Now what I've seen people do a lot is they draw, they hit undo, they draw the line again, and they may hit undo, you know, like four or five times before they get the line right. And that's fine, you can still do that if you want, but what if you could just take that contour point and nudge it a little bit to fix it instead? That's way easier. So this is why I like to use the pencil tool when doing clean lines, because it's very easy to move the line around. With the brush line, you can move the line, but you can only move one side of the line at the time because you're moving the points on the outside of the line. So it is possible to make adjustments, but you may do undesired things with the shape of the line. And, you know, you could do something like this where now I've made it really thin when I don't want it, or you can even cross over yourself and then you kind of disappear part of your line. With the pencil line, this contour editor allows you to reposition the contour points on the line but the pencil editor allows you to separately define the thick and thin of your line. So with the pencil editor, you have the contour points on the um, outside of the line, which are the ones that allow you to adjust the thick and thin on the line. And you can add and remove contour points on the outside just like you can with your contour editor. You can always, with the contour editor and with the pencil editor, you can add points by hitting Command on Mac or Control on Windows and then you can remove points by selecting the point and then hitting delete or backspace. So now that we know that we can use these contour points on a line, then it's probably a good idea to go and use the pencil line. The other reason why it's a good idea to use the pencil line is that when you are working with pencils, you can always go back later on and change the size of the line if you want to, um, which is not something that you can do with the brush line. And so I like having that extra added flexibility because sometimes you do a scene 
and then you want to adjust the thickness of the lines depending on how zoomed in the camera is and the pencil line allows you to do that whereas the brush line is not so um, in my opinion the pencil line is the way to go so keeping that in mind now I can go in here and I can take my pencil line so what I've done is I've gone on a new layer that I created in the beginning called clean and then I uh, went on the first frame and I'm starting to draw um, the only thing that you have to remember is if we're in the drawing view, the drawing view isolates out only the layer that we're working on. But if we hit the light table button, then the light table flips on the light and lets me see the piece of paper underneath it. So that allows me to see the original rough um, guide there, the rough uh, character layer underneath it, so that I can use that as I'm drawing my clean. And then I can just go in here and start to draw and you might want to kind of define some um, specific sort of sizes on your pencils or something like that for to get the right um, look and feel that you're going for and so you see that with the um, pencil line you do have quite a nice control over the line and let's say that I did this line here and I didn't quite like it I can always take my contour editor and I can move the contour points around you can also take your select tool and with your select tool you can move the entire line around so it's way easier to clean up doing it digitally because you don't have to you know worry about um, using an eraser or anything you can just kind of like take the contour points that you're working with and quite literally move them around and then the other thing that's quite nice about doing artwork digitally is that it gives you the opportunity as well copy and paste drawings from one frame to another, which I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so let's say that I've got my first drawing now and I like it quite a lot and then I'm going on to my second drawing and there's quite a bit of my drawing that's the same. Um, a lot about the character's face um, is going to change but the character's body is in pretty much the same position just with a few tweaks. So if you want to you can redraw the body or you can simply select the lines that you want to reuse and you can just copy them and paste them back onto the other frame. So if you select the lines with your select tool, uh, Command C or Control C on Windows will allow you to copy, and then Command V or Control V on Mac will, um, or on Windows will allow you to paste. So a lot of the lines I can reuse, of course I need to change some stuff, you know, maybe his neck is moving a little bit in a different direction. When you have lines like this that are overlapping, you can also make use of your cutter tool, which is underneath your select tool, to simply snip off the lines where they intersect. Or you can just click on the line and it will select it up until the intersection so that you can clean that up. Here's another handy trick. If you use um, your either your select tool or your contour editor tool, when you select the lines, you can also mouse over where the selection bounding box is and if you see the arrow where it turns into a left right arrow that allows you to skew your artwork so you can get a little bit of a feeling of him kind of changing his body's orientation without having to do a totally new drawing and as usual I can flip back and forth with the F and G keys to try and get a bit of a um, sense of how that's going to look Now you may remember um, in last week's session I showed you guys about this tool called Shift and Trace. So that's where you can actually select a couple of drawings that you want to work on. So let's say I want to select these two drawings, one and two, and then I can right click on them and I can send the drawings to the drawing view. This allows me to um, trace the drawings on top of each other to get that consistency between uh, one drawing and the next. So if I turn on my onion skin, that'll allow me to see the previous and the next drawing. 
and then I can turn on my manipulator here to overlap those. So the blue line was the line from my drawing underneath, my rough drawing. And then the red line is the previous frame's onion skin. There are different ways of showing the onion skin as well. If you don't like the way the red line looks, if you go into your preferences, then um, in the drawing tab, you can choose between these different ways. You can show the outline or you can show normal and normal just kind of shows a faded out version of the previous frame, which I kind of like the best, but it's up to you. So at this point now, if I'm going to trace the face, then I have a little bit of a guide to use to help me get the face in the right position. So I can see that the nose is going to be slightly further over, but I want to keep it similar and on model, so I'm using that um, previous frame in the shift and trace as a guideline to make the new drawing so I don't have to start completely from scratch. So you see here I didn't draw this line totally correctly. But it's a hard line to draw, so rather than starting it again from scratch, what I'll do is I'll just select the contour editor and I'll move the contour points around. And I have an extra contour point here I don't need, so I can select it and hit delete. And then I can line these guys up like that. And that way I've got my line without having to totally redraw everything. It's way faster. And now I can turn off the onion skin and turn off the shift and trace and even the light table if I want to just look at this drawing on its own. And now I can check out from that frame to this frame how that works. So that's looking pretty good. So hopefully you're already getting a sense of where we're going with this. I'm going to speed up uh, the process of doing the next few frames and let you watch along if you like. So sometimes you might get yourself into a situation where you have two lines that you've drawn separately that you want to merge them together. And you might have this happen when you draw like one part of a line and then you draw the other part of the line um, and you get some funny business in between the two. So you really want it to just merge into one line. So when you're working with pencil lines, what you want to do is select the two parts of the line there. And then if you go into your tool properties, then there is an option in here that is called Merge Pencil Lines. And so when you click on Merge Pencil Lines, it will turn it all into one line. Now sometimes it does some funky stuff in the middle where it tries to join the lines together because the paths might not be totally aligned. But that's okay because you can just take your contour editor and you can just remove the point in the middle that's causing you trouble and you're golden again. If you do need to as well, you can also go in there and remove the pencil editor point because it tries to preserve as much information from the original two lines. And the reason I merged them together in the first place was because the lines didn't look good separate. So, you know, after you merge them, you do have to go back and just touch it up. But then you're ready to go. So the nice thing is that between this drawing and this drawing, not a whole lot is changing except his hair and a little bit the position of his body. So I can actually copy and paste the entire drawing and just change those things that are actually changing so that I don't have to redo the whole drawing.
So here's another good reason to do shift and trace. This drawing is very similar to my first drawing. It's just on the other side. I don't actually want to copy the first drawing, but I want it there as reference. So I can take the last drawing and then I can control click or command click on Mac on the first drawing and send these drawings to the drawing view. Now if I turn on my onion skin, I can see them together and then when I'm going on to the last drawing, I can use the first one as reference. And if I made some changes in this drawing to the eyebrows and I want to go back and make the changes in the other drawings, I can remove all of these drawings from my shift and trace, turn off the onion skin, and then just go back and um, delete the drawing, delete the eyebrows that were there in the previous drawing. So I just select and hit delete. And then I can paste back the new eyebrows that I did. And I just will need to reposition them into the right spot. So now let's take a look at this, turning off my light table and turning off my onion skin. I can even turn off my grid if I just want to see the character on its own. So I flip through the animation and see how it works. It's working pretty well. I just have, uh, you know, I lost the collar. The, the body looks a little funny in the, in the middle frame there. So let's go and fix that. There we go. So now I've got my clean animation done and I'll be ready to do coloring next week. One thing to keep in mind is I've done quite a bit of reuse of lines and drawings here and the, you will meet some animators that will say, hey, I don't reuse anything at all. I do everything from scratch on each frame. Um, then you'll see a lot of animators that do reuse a lot and particularly when you do look at styles like that anime style that's very heavy and has lots of lines in it, um, they'll try to reuse as much as possible. So they'll reuse the body on a bunch of different frames and then just redraw the face. You know, they'll do as much reuse as possible so that they can save a little bit of time and money on production. Particularly when you're doing stuff for TV, you've got to release uh, quite quickly. So you need to be able to do production very fast, which means reusing as many elements as possible. So hopefully that little session on cleanup was useful to you guys. And we will continue next week with how to color this in.